Hot Kid. Hot Kid, welcome to Good Time Story Time, where we have the story of Dr. George Washington Carver, who was actually born a slave, but he was really born to be a botanist. Yes, a botanist. What is a botanist, you ask? And maybe you actually are asking. That is a scientist who is a specialist in plants and stuff. Yes, so what did he do with all this knowledge, you ask? Yes, you ask? This book is about to tell us. <laughs> Indeed, in the garden with Dr. Carver. Yes, he actually was born during the time of slavery, the first year of his life, but after that, free man. And what did he do with that thirsty, free brain of his? filled it with knowledge. What did he do with all that knowledge? Well, you're about to find out. I'll never forget the Sunday that we stepped out of church and saw an old mule waiting beside a funny looking wagon. The man with the wagon was George Washington Carver, the famous plant scientist from the big school in Tuskegee. Look at that, a funny looking wagon, the Jessup agricultural wagon. Have you ever seen such a thing? I think not, because I think this is a one-of-a-kind situation. Dr. Carver called the wagon his movable school, and it was piled high with plants, tools, and seeds. The adults all gathered around, eager for advice. They had heard about the 20-pound cabbages and the onions as big as a young kid's head that Dr. Carver had grown on land just like ours. Wow, he's like a planting genius. He said the plants get from the soil the foods that they need to make them grow. Ah, just like we get what we need to grow from our foods that we eat, the soil is the food that the plants eat. But Cotton, like a hungry monster, had gobbled up the good foods in Alabama soil. So Dr. Carver was showing folks how to make our poor soil healthy again. That is a real thing. Now everybody takes it for granted, but boy, making bad soil work for you again, that is a science and an art. He was even teaching people how to turn simple foods like peanuts and sweet potatoes into luxuries like coffee, butter, and sugar. Oh, storyteller can't imagine a life without coffee, butter, and sugar. Hundreds of new products poured out of his laboratory, all made from plants that we could grow. It truly is an astonishing field when you find out all you can do with the simple things you plant in the ground. But for me, the best part of Dr. Carver's visit was that he agreed to stay through Monday to help us with a garden at our school. Ooh, that's exciting to have a pro like this at your school garden. Man, that's ooh, what an opportunity that is. Uh, who here would like to learn to be a plant doctor? Dr. Carver asked. So I waved my hand the hardest. Hey, me, 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 me. So he asked me to observe the first case. So, Dr. Sally, he said, why do you think that this rosebush is looking so weak when her cousins by the fence are covered in beautiful red roses? Um, I don't know, I admitted. What should I do first? Listen to the plants and they'll tell you what they need. Go on. So I thought about what Dr. Carver meant. Maybe it was like listening to the wind and watching the sky to tell the weather. Hmm, maybe. This kid's already trying to listen to the rose bushes. Good kid, good. I looked over at the healthy roses, basking in the bright sunshine. <gasps> huh, I think I'm beginning to understand. Then I examined my patient, just one single rose, like on my hand, grew on her entire bush as she sat all alone in the shade beside the shed. I got it! I cried out. My patient needs to be moved to where she'll get more sunlight. That is an excellent job of observation, Dr. Sally, Dr. Carver said. Now let us begin the operation. So Dr. Carver showed us how to transplant the rose bush very carefully without damaging her roots or letting her scratch us. So no damage to people or plant. 
When I was a boy, said Dr. Carver, drawing and plants were my two passions. I mixed my own paints and covered stones and discarded boards with pictures of the flowers. And I was always asking questions. I wanted to know the names of every strange stone and flower, every insect, bird, and beast that visited the garden. Now, of course, we all wanted to know about the garden, too. So we just sat there quiet, watching, listening to nature, and drawing the beetles and the bees and flowers and fungi, worms and birds and pretty bits of stone. I never knew our garden was such a busy place. And Dr. Carver knew the names of everything. There's the honeybee and there's the, what kind of a daisy is that? The o Oxaya daisy. And it has the actual Latin name below that I'm not even gonna try because it is very complicated. The red maple, the may beetle, the American painted lady butterfly, the field cricket, the conglomerate, which is a sedimentary rock, the quaking aspen. Oh, he knew the names for everything. Science. Science always has fascinating names and names that we can say and then the names in Latin that maybe we cannot say as well. Like this field cricket is the grillus Pennsylvania Pennsylvanicus. I bet one of you out there watching right now is going to be a scientist and you're going to know how to say all these things. My brother Ben found a big web stretched out like a fishing net spun of the finest lace. On it waited a huge and hungry spider. Ben raised a stick ready to kill it. Oh no. But that's when Dr. Carver stopped him. That spider is helping your garden, explained Dr. Carver, by eating up the creatures that want to eat your plants. Before you change or destroy something, you need to understand why it exists and its relationship with the rest of nature. The plants, the soil, and the animals that visit are all connected. Like what? Like a web, a cobweb to be precise. In every single flower bed, dandelions held up their sunny yellow heads. Who planted all of these? Lucy asked. Oh, that would be old man wind, <laughs> chuckled Dr. Carver. He showed us how the fluff of the dandelion puffball was really a family of hundreds of seeds carried by the wind. They could travel miles before landing and beginning to grow. A plant is a weed if it's growing uninvited, we learned. Those greedy dandelions were taking food, light, and water from the flowers that our teacher, Miss Simpson, had planted. So Dr. Carver, sh Carver showed us how to remove the dandelions, pulling them up by their long and hungry roots. Ah, yes, because if you don't get it by the roots, it'll just whoop, come back up again. We saved their youngest leaves for our lunchtime salad. Oh, a dandelion salad. Dr. Carver said we should eat all of the fruits and vegetables that we could. That is still good advice to this day. This is the man ahead of his time right there. By then, we were as hungry as a pack of wild dandelions. Miss Simpson and the older students had cooked a delicious spread of picnic food using recipes invented by... Dr. Carver. Should we call him Chef Carver as well? After every bit was gobbled up, they told us what we'd eaten. Sweet potato flour bread, chicken, chicken, made from peanuts. Oh my goodness. He was coming up with original <laughs> vegetarian recipes. And a salad of strange wild weeds. And for dessert, peanuts, ice cream, and cake. Woo! That sounds delicious to me. Wow, I'd even try out this this peanut chicken, huh? After our feast, ooh, are you ready for a nap? Because everybody looks really full. Dr. Carver said it was time, oh, no nap time. It's time to plant our own kitchen garden. So we followed him to this lot behind our school. This spot is no good, Emmett said. It's sunny, but the soil's rock hard. See, it won't bulge. Oh, oh, he's right, I said. Nothing ever grows out here, not even weeds. And nothing ever will unless we improve this worn out land, said Dr. Carver. Plants, like people, need nutritious food to help them grow. Well, I'm fascinated to see how he does it. Dr. Carver took us to a patch of forest near our school. We scooped up buckets full of rich and leafy loam. That's what you call this very rich, dark soil that's full of nutrients. Loam, L-O-A-M. 
While we worked, he explained how rotting plants were full of actually good things to help feed healthy plants. So it's kind of the circle of life. The plants are dying and rotting, but they're then creating food in the soil to help new things grow. Leaf mulch, swamp muck, and the decaying roots of peanuts, peas, and beans will all enrich the soil, he said. You can make your own fertilizer, too. I'll leave Miss Simpson my recipe for compost. Paper shreds, vegetable scraps, anything that breaks down quickly will quickly put nutrients back into the soil. So much of what people waste can be put to good use. Oh, it's like Earth Day with him every single day. We cleared the plot of stones, spaded and hoed, chopped and raked. Oh, it is hard work. It's like you can skip the gym this day. Turning and mixing into the soil, the forest hummus that we'd gathered, we worked that soil until we had a fine, rich field. Then we divided it into plots. We planted sweet potato slips and peanuts, snap beans, lima beans, cow peas, squash, okra, and melons. Ooh, melons. Dr. Carver asked us to show him the nearest dump. Huh, why are we going to the dump? Oh, because he said like, Trash can be treasure for the soil. Let's see. We found wood scraps to use for our plant markers. Okay, so it's like recycling at its finest, absolutely. And a raggedy headed mop to make a tall scarecrow. When Clarence grumbled about picking through the dump, Dr. Carver told him that he, how he'd made test tubes, lamps, and all sorts of tools for his lab from the reused treasures of just such a dump. The word treasure set Clarence's eyes on fire. <laughs> And he kept picking until he found a fine costume for our shaggy-headed scarecrow. Back at school, we used milk paint to label our garden signs so that we'd remember what we had planted where. Very important to label because then later on you forget and you think your okras are melons and you think your melons are peas. We were all sad to see Dr. Carver leave. Oh, no kidding, I'm sad to see him leave too. But he made Miss Simpson promise to take us outdoors every day for nature study and gardening lessons. And he gave her papers he'd written to use as our school guides. And we promised Dr. Carver that we wouldn't eat wild weeds, as some can be very poisonous, until our teacher taught us which ones were safe. Now, some people come in and out of your life as quickly as a hummingbird, darting at a trumpet vine. And some of them, when gone, leave something behind that sticks in your heart or in your mind. It sticks to you like a little burr on your sock. It wraps around you like the tendrils of a vine. Since that day that we spent in the garden with Dr. Carver, whenever I step among flowers, trees, or vegetables, I remember his words. Listen to the plants and they'll tell you what they need. And they do. Goodbye, Dr. Carver. Good luck in your next town. And this is actually uh, even though it's it's sort of a, a make-believe story, it's actually based on a true thing, which is that he had this cart that he took around and called it the movable school and went everywhere with his old wagon teaching people exactly what you saw in this story, how to make the land work for you and how to take care of it. Because that way, yes, Doug the Dinosaur, it could take care of you. Very good. I love this story. Why? Because so many reasons. Yes, so many reasons. First of all, because we love how he was super eco-friendly because we love the earth. Yes, we love the earth and stuff because, well, it's our home. Yeah, it's our home planet. Also, uh, because it taught us how we can take stuff that people throw away. Uh-huh, and make it a treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, it's not kind of, it's getting kind of like storyteller, like when, when we bought some toys at the used place because some other kid didn't want it anymore, but then it would be a new toy for us. Isn't it like recycling like that? Like taking a treasure uh, and that, that was somebody else's trash? That's exactly what it's like. See, I told you, but I didn't think it was the same thing because it was toys. No, no, it's all the same thing. In taking things that others throw away and making something fantastic and beautiful and new with it. Yes, I was right. You were right. This is true. 
Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, Green Bear. And thank you for joining us in the garden with Dr. Carver. I am going to plant something now. Oh, I want to go. I want to go. I don't know what they're going to. Oh, okay. Bye. I don't know what they're going to plant, but ooh, I better join them. And remember, kid, always look for the treasures all around and keep your garden lush and fertile. See you next time on Kid Time Storytime.